Thank you for tuning in to this edition of NASDAQ Amplifies Issuer Spotlight, where we feature conversations with leaders of some of the world's most innovative and growth-oriented small cap companies. Today, I'm joined by Ofer Vikas, founder and chief executive officer of NASDAQ listed Enduro Clean Technologies. Ofer, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Hi, Michael. Super excited to be here. We're excited to have you. Can you start by telling me a little bit about Enduro Technologies and what you're working on? Yes, yes, easy. Um, we at Aduro are, have been discovered uh, some phenomenon that basically um, take uh, longer, larger molecules um, and clip them and make them smaller. And it's inspiring because it is first in kind phenomenon that was hidden very much in, uh, um, for many, many years behind uh, uh, all kinds of technologies. But it also has significant application and potential um, uh, business application. So we take uh, low value, heavy crude, and we turn it into a higher value crude. Uh, in the chemical recycling, we actually take contaminated, hard to recycle plastic and turn it into some kind of an oil that most of it will go back and become new plastic as a feedstock for new plastic. And we have even other applications that are out there that we are not even now pursuing. Um, we call it a chemical platform technology. It has huge addressable market over $200 billion today. So it's, it's very large. It's extremely uh, exciting because everything that we do right now is pretty new. And through the generation, we've been out there from since 2011. Um, all that we see is just we're learning again and again and again how, how great this technology is and how the biggest potential, really. And you have a number of exciting partnerships. Can you yes. talk a little bit about the companies that you're currently collaborating with? A little bit, yeah. So we, uh, because this is all new, we came up with a program which we call Customer Engagement Program. So the first initiation from my end was to prove, first of all, that the technology is unique as because, as I mentioned, it was hidden beneath many, many other technologies and not been discovered by among some of the largest organization in the world. And so we build this uh, customer engagement program where we um, engage a large organization, petrochemical organization, to give us services. And we uh, build this program to uh, first test the technology. Uh, so we sell them some data and later uh, work on some collaborative agreement with them. So we gain a lot from them moving off the bench and contributing mm -hmm. and helping us to develop the technology. And of course, with that, we have a vision to commercialization. So. We have a collaborative agreement with Total uh, that has been um, working really for the last uh, a little bit more than a year now, uh, and they started exactly as I mentioned. They have tested the you know bought some data from us, then entered into some collaborative agreement, and now we're in the midst of that. We are being tested by Shell, Shell Game Changer. We've accepted to this program almost two years ago, and this program is a fast to fail kind of a concept, and Shell keep asking questions about the technologies and we are keeping answering those technologies. We are bound by NDA, so it's very hard to say anything about Shell in general and the game changer, but we're very excited. And recently we um, even came and worked with a, a company named Upeno, which is a very large organization that is doing a very particular type of piping made of very uh, hard to recycle polymers for which we are seeing an opportunity for them to recycle them. And otherwise, those type of polymers will go straight to the landfill or incineration. So you mentioned energy, chemicals. Do you yes. see synergy across other industries for your technology or? Yes, so the, the company has, uh, as I mentioned, it's a chemical recycling or a chemical uh, technology platform. So it has different applications and each one of them could be an industry maker. So when we're thinking about the energy sector, it is more related to maybe what's going on today with the energy and oil uh, in um, you, you know, America. So uh, heavy oil, so upgrading of heavy oil. And this is, uh, we have an, an engagement and relation with one of the largest organization in Canada for the last five years. It's under NDA and they are testing and we're working on testing the technology. There is, uh, in the chemical sector, we have a very strong footprint into a chemical recycling because basically the technology is able to break some barriers that current approaches have some serious challenges. And that allows us basically to open ourselves to different business models, different markets, 
um, expand uh, what we think in a really rapid way. And all of that because of the benefit that embedded in the technologies. And there are other sectors that uh, we still are, you know, uh, in the making and we're thinking of them. Some of them are confidential and within time they will come out. Have you faced any challenges with scaling your technology and working towards full commercialization? Yeah, I mean, uh, there is uh, no way around it. Everything that we do right now is very new. There's no history to what we've been doing. The phenomenon that we discovered in 2011 and we've developed around it uh, a full scale up uh, technologies even um, is, is one in a kind. It's not been out there, there are several approaches that are working near us that are dated you know, as early as 70 and 80 years old. So we're definitely a new kids in the block that is representing something, so there's no history. On the other hand, that is what's so inspiring and exciting. Uh, once we learn it, the more we learn it, the more we understand how beneficial some applications could be. Chemical recycling is one of them. We definitely have answers that other uh, right now, we feel we are, um, are facing serious challenges. We are, you know, giving some solutions to that. And in every uh, case of every work that we're doing, we're doing. Of course, there is some challenges, but there's also there's the benefit of seeing the potential. Once you you hit the mountain, you go, you cross it, and you move forward. And so, all we see right now is a great opportunities. So you've established a European subsidiary. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about the opportunities you see in Europe and yes, that yes. expansion? Absolutely. So, so Europe for us, uh, and you know more today than than ever, is a, a hub for establishing our chemical recycling programs. Uh, Europe is uh, dominated in the regulations. Europe is motivated. Uh, Europe in general is investing a lot in this, and Europe also are facing a lot of those challenges that I mentioned in terms of chemical recycling. So it was only natural for us to come and bring an entity there that will you know, introduce ourselves and help us penetrate the European market. Our CRO, Eric uh, Appelman, is from the Netherlands. So of course, he's an employee of that subsidiary. We have uh, built relationship with a, a very strong chemical hub named uh, Brightland uh, in the Netherlands. And Brightland has about 120 or 130 uh, uh, companies that are hosting and showcasing their pilot program and they see us as one that could do really good things for plastic that is harder to recycle and so we have intention to develop those relationships so it was only natural for us to build all of this in within a subsidiary and it's gaining momentum as we'll see opportunities that are coming in. So panning out a little bit, you spoke a little bit about the opportunities that you see. Yes. What should stakeholders be watching in terms of commercialization milestones over the next, let's call it 12 to 18 months? So Michael, we are, um, every, every year we set some goals and the concept behind those goals is to do three things basically. The first one is to create opportunities for the company. The second one is to work to de-risk. Remember, there's no history to what we've been doing. And the third one, to make sure that investors uh, see that we're making a progress because we can't not always you're getting it into the right time. So in 2024, we set some goals that exactly represent that. Some of them were uh, associated with finishing the design of our pilot. Uh, others were related to patents and others were related to some uh, engagement of uh, partners. And in 2025, we set goals to finish and complete our pilot. So this is a really important and turning point from our perspective. So until today, we had technology demonstration. And in 2025, we have, we are building actually a pilot made of all industrial component that represent a process for the first time. So we took an idea several years ago and now we're bringing it up to live. And if uh, people will look a little bit closer into the, the statements that we make, we also wanna be ready in 2025 with design of a commercial. Uh, or a demonstration unit which will earn revenue. So people that uh, will look at the news that uh, we are looking at, or you know what we've been doing, is basically should should seek for, you know, engagements with partners that we want to work with, uh, news about our progress of the pilot. The pilot right now is uh, to be ready by end of uh, Q3 of uh, 2025, and later coming up with the finished design for the basic design for the demonstration unit. So a lot of turning point for the company. And last year, Michael, one of the high, highest points for us was November 7, when we've been here and, and uh, uh, been uplisted and they're doing the bell ring. And uh, this is what's on top, the cream of the crop on top of the, all the others um, uh, milestones that we uh, reached out. And we are just trying to do the same this year. Every year for us 
It's a year that we are thinking we should work for investors. We should create as much as value as we can. We should de-risk the company. We should make sure that we're making progress. So investors should watch uh, and monitor. And if they like what they see, then they'll make their own choice. So I sense your your passion and About your enthusiasm it? for what Absolutely. you do. Yeah. So that's, I mean, it's a great thing, right? Um, so talk to me about the importance of environmental stewardship and what keeps you passionate about the work you're doing. Um, the environmental stewardship is, um, in my, in our perspective, um, is has a huge potential. Uh, the reason we are becoming very careful about it because we are trying to stay as transparent as we can with our investors and the stakeholders and everyone around us. Um, we are basically, the technology basically operates in a smaller uh, temperature mode or energy mode. The technology has high tolerance for contamination, which really affects a lot of capital costs around it. Technology doesn't use uh, things that are sometimes not so great to the environment, such, such as hydrogen. So overall, the technology has huge benefit to the environment. Um, the fact that the technology is modular uh, allows us to scale up. So we can do smaller scale. So Imagine a situation where normally a centralized location are coming in and, and you know, they have to kind of normalize the whole environment in order to get their fit. So basically our peers are taking the best of the best of material and you know, a lot of it is, is out there running outside and I'll give you some number in a minute about it, where we are focusing on building solution to a situation. In other words, you know, we can do a smaller scale, uh, very uh, uh, localized unit to uh, uh, maybe a, a unique uh, opportunity. And we can do a larger scale in centralized location to a different opportunity. So this is how we're thinking about it. And with that, one word about, um, but because of that, by the way, you can see the benefit, you know, if you, trans if you save transportation, for example. But one word about just the, the numbers and the size when we're talking about chemical recycling, so today, uh, in general, about 400 million tons of waste plastic are everywhere. Society is producing that. And no more than 10%, Michael, today are recycled. Most of them are by, chemical, by mechanical recycling, and only 1% of it is chemical recycling. So we have this opportunity to process more and more of that waste that is otherwise is not being recycled. And of course, that by itself has an environment benefit. So. All of this bundle uh, will discover itself in the future as the pilot uh, will be built, as data will be generated, and we will share this data with everyone. So obviously, we're here in Times Square at NASDAQ Market Site. Yeah. You're a NASDAQ listed company. You mentioned yes. the bell and that milestone. It was very great to be here. Yeah. So talk to me about that and talk to me about what role the public markets have played in advancing your mission. It's, uh, um, well, it's, it's monumental. Uh, personal, personal, you know, uh, achievement, I guess. Uh, I can't be honored more, you know, I can't think about it in, in a, a less honored situation. I, I don't think there's a lot of opportunities to come in and be, become what we are. I mean, it's a, it's a statement to the team that was working so hard for the last 10, you know, maybe uh, 11, 12 years, some of them, and not for reason we have what you call here Team Maduro. Uh, that's how we see ourselves. Um, it's an opportunity to showcase to investors, to the real world on worldwide stage. It's the credit that we get to be here. It's the access to the capital. It's all those good things. Uh, so not just that we are coming with, you know, all of our passion and technology and reason is to do good, but it's an opportunity to show it to the rest of the world. And this is a completion uh, and from my perspective. You sit in an interesting position because not only are you the CEO of Aduro, but you're also one of the founders. Yes. yes. So what generate what what advice do you have for the next generation of innovators and entrepreneurs who someday hope to take their company public? Wow. I uh, I I mean uh, there's no easy way uh, to describe the journey. My journey is over 14 years now, and the journey of uh, Mark Tricks and my partner is the same. Um, I think you want to be very passionate about what you're doing. I think. In your mind, you need to know that you're doing something good and that there is a real potential around it, uh, no wishy-washy. You have to uh, really accept the fact that in reality, there'll be so, so much difficulties on the way. And um, if you're not ready for them, that, that will be a difficult uh, problem. I think you want to really um, surround yourself and work yourself with, with, good, with good team with good people around you. So get rid of everyone that is bad or toxic and no, it will not work. Don't worry about it. Let me tell you why it's not working. And just stay around with the people that share some positives around you 
that uh, you know allows you to fly basically i think that's a great place to leave it and a good piece of advice if you want to learn more about aduro clean technologies they trade right here on nasdaq under the symbol adur ofer thank you so much for being here and thank you all for watching